Okay, so continuing our look at our phylogeny, we're going to look at this part of the tree. So as a reminder, we looked at eubacteria, which is the outgroup of archaeobacteria and eukaryotes. And then archaeobacteria were the outgroup compared to eukaryotes. Within eukaryotes, we see green plant as basal to animals and fungi. And then animals and fungi is sister taxa. And we've already talked about fungi and green plants. So now let's look at animals. So this is a phylogeny of the major phyla of animals. So we can see basal are tenophores, also called comb jellies, and then periphera, and then cnidarians, jellyfish, anemones, and corals. The cnidarians look a lot like tenophores, but they have the stinging cells. That's a synapomorphy for cnidarians. And these three phyla here don't have three cell layers. So bilateria, bilateral symmetry, and the evolution of three cell layers is a synapomorphy for all these phyla here. And then there's a division here between proteostomes and deuterostomes. Proteostomes further split into ectisozoans and lophotrochozoans. Within ectisozoa, we have nematodes as basal to onychophrons and arthropods. Within lophotrochozoa, we have annelids as basal to mollusks and platyhelminthes. And then over in deuterostomes, we have chordates and echinoderms. So these are major phyla of animals, so you want to make sure you know all of them. And remember, there were actually far more phyla than this in the Burgess Shale and during the Cambrian Explosion. These are the major ones for which we have living members. There are a few other phyla I have not illustrated here, because to have them all would make the tree too big. For now, let's look at the basal three clades, the tenophores, the peripherans, and the cnidarians. So tenophores are comb jellies. They look like jellyfish, they swim around, they live in the oceans, but they do not have stinging cells. They don't have nematocysts. Peripherans are sponges, so they filter feed. So you can see there, they don't have any moving parts. They're basically just structures. They have cells with hair that create water flow that uh, moves through the sponges and then they filter food out of the, the water. And although they're very simple, and we would be tempted to think of them as like less evolved or something like that, that's not the way we want to think about things, right? So although they don't move and they don't have like joints and muscles, at the chemical level, they are in fact very sophisticated. So because they can't defend themselves with movement or um, things like that, there's actually a very fascinating biochemistry and metabolism that goes on within sponges, in their immune system, in their chemical defense system, and so forth. So sponges, although they're maybe not as complex in terms of having a number of cell layers, they are just as complex in terms of the different molecules that they make. And of course, because they're still around today, they have been evolving for just as long as everything else, and they're as successful as everything else because they're still alive. And then cnidarians. So cnidarians are jellyfish, anemones, and corals. There are basically two types of cnidarians. There are ones where the bulb part kind of implants in the substrate and the, the limbs hang out and uh, do filter feeding. Or there are free living ones like jellyfish and swim around like this. And the stinging cells, these nematocysts, are in the tentacles, right? So if you've seen Finding Nemo, you know you can bounce on the top here and it's not a problem. It's this part you have to watch out for. And those nematocysts are used for stinging prey and then capturing prey and then consuming prey. And corals, so coral reefs, are in fact very, very small cnidarians that live within the rock and a large, large number of them all living next to each other is what makes up a coral. So there's a wide range of different morphologies within this phylum of cnidaria. They all have nematocysts, but they go from free living to large, basically predatory organisms, to very, very small organisms that build reefs.